Hey there, welcome back. This is Oakley's DIY Home Renovation. And today is the day my brand new Titan HEA sprayer has arrived. Now, there's many paint sprayers out there, airless paint sprayers. Um, and how did I come about this one? Well, originally I was gonna get a Graco. Uh, but after watching uh, some videos of people painting and a shout out to Chris, the Idaho painter, uh, who uses Titans. Now, he uses the more expensive Titans, which I don't necessarily need uh, for what I'm doing. I'm not looking to go into business and, and do this day in and day out. So for my budget and my needs, so I went with this less expensive model than what he shows, and it's the uh, high efficiency uh, paint sprayer, the HEA. Uh, it's the 1900 Pro, they make a 1700. Uh, the 1700 comes tall like this also, but they also make the, the short uh, skid ones in the 17 and the 1900. I got the 1900 uh, in the tall like this so that I could put a five gallon paint uh, uh, bucket underneath. Uh, it has a hook, you can pick up the paint bucket and the sprayer and, and go. I don't have to worry about it tipping over. And I like the fact that it has wheels and be easy to move around. So. Let's get started opening this puppy up and see what we got inside. Rest of everything right here. The spray gun. Like I say, I got a 50 foot hose, instructions, and the tip. And I'll let confirm, but I'm pretty sure it was a 515 tip that came with it. So I'll put this all back together because, well, I'm a little anal like that and want it back in the box the way it came in case I need to reuse the box for something like s storing it or if it breaks or something I can send it back so I'm really excited to get started with this let's get this out of the way here alrighty so here we are. We've got our instruction booklet, a cart that has an uh, adjustable handle, nice wheels. Whoop, just dropped the hose. But that's okay. Nice wheels. Looks to be perfect. Nothing going on. Open this bag of stuff here. See what we have in here. We have our spray gun right here. Nice metal gun. And our tip. Yep, and it's a 515. So that'll work out just great. I did buy some other tips to go with this. I had to buy them though. I got them from eBay because I wanted to try and get them all from one place and I found a place on eBay that had them. Uh, there was one tip I didn't get that I would like to have, but uh, the fact that I don't, that's okay. So I got four Titan HEA tips here. Now with this particular unit, the HEA 1700 and 1900, uh, you can only use their specific HEA tips. They have to have this uh, prefix of of 353 on there. Um, none of the fine finishes or any of the other tips work with this machine. But what I did was is I got a 313, a 413, a 517, and a 311. Now why did I get all these sizes? Uh, the 311 and 313, uh, they'll do different materials. The 311 will do materials that, uh, or I should say, the 313 will do materials that can't go through, three, through the 311. The same with the 413, heavier materials can go through it, but not through these others. And I got the 517 because this tip here can do any of the heavier, uh, thicker paints. The only other tip that you can get for this particular machine is a 619. The the 1700, the highest it can be is a 17, a 0 0.017. Whereas with this 19, I can go up to 0 0.019. Now, what does all that mean? Um, so the first three numbers are 
not what we're worried about right now. The five, the four, and the three, all what that means is the spray width. So double that. So if it's a five, it means you got a 10 inch pattern, a three, a six, a four, and eight. The 17 has to do with the size of the aperture that's letting the paint out. So an 11 is going to have less paint coming through it than a 17. So that's why I got these. So I wouldn't be limited on any of the uh, materials I wanted to put through it. The only other tip I would have liked to have gotten was a 211, but they didn't have any in stock. And so uh, the 311 will do everything that the 211 will. The only reason I wanted the 211 was because that means it's a four inch spray pattern and I could use it for smaller um, items and I didn't want to overspray. Um, so the reason I got this HEA is because it says it's 55% less overspray and that's definitely a good thing for me. So I've got these four, four tips plus the one that come with it. Okay, I read through the instructions. It's about 22 pages. Uh, it's quite in depth. But what we'll do is I'll kind of put the machine together here and then the next thing we'll do is we'll put um, we'll get some water and prime this thing and set it up to spray and we'll spray with some different tips. So first thing was is this here was off and sitting inside here and this is your filter for your strainer for your paint. So your paint is going to come up through this into this tube so this will strain out any any debris so that goes on there the spray gun you have this end here you can tell goes through the hole hooks up here keep this up here and turn it on twist it till it's on just like that. Now the tip here was already on, but it comes off like that. It'll need to come off for part of the setup. So what we can do is, is we can take our tip here, um, the 515 that come with it. This tip here has a special design. You see this little out pocketing here, and then it goes smooth on the sides. That's so when you put it in the gun, Put it in sideways, push down, seats down in there, and then you can turn it. It'll only go this far, or you can turn it all the way around this way. So that's the on direction. So we'll put this back on the gun. This hose is quite stiff. I may wind up getting me what they call a whip hose, which is flexible so that you can do this without being uh, hindered by the stiffness of this hose. So you hand tighten this only. And you can turn this to spray. You can spray like this, where it's gonna come out this direction. Or you can turn the tip this way, and it's gonna spray this direction. So. Turn this like this so the tip doesn't get messed up. And then you take this end of the hose and you put it on here. And then use a crescent wrench. Tighten it down, and you're all set. My tips all fit right inside here. Um, I'll get you a close up here. I've got four little holes, so all four tips will fit. Uh, your prime and spray button is here. Your electric cord's back here. Uh, you can wrap your hose around these uh, hooks here, and you're all set. So um, next thing will be to get some water and prime this and test drive it. There's your picture of the spray tips and the compartments. This just pops down here and here and it's all set. And away we go. Okay, we're outside with the new Titan HEA 1900 sprayer here. And so we've got our down tubes that go on our product. 
Um, this is your filter for your uh, machine, so it filters the product as it goes through. They always recommend that you pre-filter your your paint or whatever before you put this in anyway, and in case you don't, here's another filter. So if it gets to where it's not spraying very well, this is what you'll need to check to see if it's clogged. And so this goes on the end here. This little clip comes off. This is your little side tube. This comes off. Here's your little clamp for it. And the same thing for this tube here. It has a little clamp on it. So you can take this tube off also to clean. In fact, when you're cleaning it up and that, they recommend that you take this off and wash it out uh, before you put it all back together. Here is your prime and spray button. Down for prime, there for spray. Now there's a little relief uh, valve over here. A little red button here that before you get started, you're supposed to push that in and it allows a little ball in there to be released and then you let go. So, as far as tips, it's got this nice little handy storage bin up here. I'll get all my tips out and I got seven tips. And I've got seven tips. That's all the tips uh, that you can get for it. I, it came with a 515 and I bought all these others for different products. So it goes 211 and again the 2 stands for how wide the pattern's going to be at 12 inches away. So a 2 means it's 4 inches wide, 3 is 6, 4 is 8, 5 is 10, 6 is 12. So the second number, the 11, uh, has to do with the orifice size here. So 11 is 11 thousandths. So that's the amount of product that will come through. We'll start, uh, we're going to go through and use each tip when we get started here and see what kind of pattern spray and everything there is. This little clip kind of holds all this on here. Once you've got it primed, uh, you got 50 foot of pressure hose. And then this tip with the guard. So let's hook these up. I didn't get a whip hose uh, with this, and I think I'm going to because this uh, tubing is pretty stiff. And I'm just using a crescent wrench. You don't want to over tighten, just tighten it snug. And then this end goes here. And we're going to put that on in a minute, but I'm going to try something first. So, um, as far as getting started and then you got your power cord so all i have is water they actually recommend in the directions that you start with water and learn with that before you use your product so here's my water now there's a little these little bars back here, you just push it up till it hits your bucket and you've got it all the way in. So it's in there, it's at the bottom of the bucket, it's hitting the bottom of the bucket, so you wind up getting all your product. So for uh, priming the pump, before you get started, again, you push this little release button over here, make sure this is on zero. You'll put this to prime, which is down, and you'll turn this on by turning this knob to two and while you're doing so, you'll have this tube out into kind of a waste can. And when you start to see the product come out of here, then your pump is primed and you just shut it off. And you put this back in, put your clamp on, and you're good to go. So let me plug it in and we'll do it. Now I'm leaving off, and it may be a disaster. We'll find out. I'm leaving this off because I want to see, does any product come through that hole into the hose when you're priming it? And I'll get to why I want to know that here in just a minute. So we've got it on prime. And 
answered my question. So you do get it. So it winds up priming the hose and the pump at the same time. So we'll have to go back and put this on. Don't want to over tighten. There. Now, I don't have a tip on here and it's not going to spray out unless this gun's depressed. So uh, I'm going to do it just like this and I'll leave it here just so you can see. So let's do this again. Again, we're waiting for a product to come out of this tube. So way more than what I needed to, but now you got the product. So, and you can see the tubes actually plumb uh, all the way full. So you put this back and now you're ready um, to spray. And so what you'll do is, is you'll turn this to spray, turn your machine on, press the trigger until you see stuff coming out. So we'll leave it on prime for a second. We're just going to go to two, spray. You see, it takes just a little while for that product to get up here. And that's kind of what I was wanting to see. Uh, in a minute here, we're going to see just how much product this tube holds and how much the, the machine itself holds. Because I'm venturing to say, I bet it holds a quart which is a fair amount of product to lose every time you use this. So I'm just going to put it to two. It goes to five and the higher numbers, the higher pumping probably going to be for your thicker product, but I'm just using water. So it's not a big deal. So it's on two. When it gets to pressure, it stops. So we'll put this tip on. Now I'm going to start with my two. And we're just going to spray the fence over here. So basically you're t what you want to do is there's a big hole here and then the small hole. Obviously you want the small hole pointing outward. So you're going to put this in. And you need this loose before you put it in. If you tighten this up, this won't fit in. And then you're just going to turn it to where it needs to go. And you just hand tighten it. Now, with the uh, tip like this, you're going to have a spray pattern here. If you want your spray pattern up, naturally you're going to have to turn your tip sideways. And then if for some reason your tip becomes clogged, you're going to turn it around and spray to unclog it. So we're all set. I'm going to go over here and spray on the fence. Now again, at 12 inches is where your spray pattern is. This, like I said, this tube is kind of stiff. I think I will buy that whip hose. But this is about where I think. Then this tape's 12 inches. So about right there. Yep, about four inches. So. Very easy to use. See, I'm right there. What is that? Right at 12 inches. So, and you're looking at the overspray and water, and there is some, but this is supposed to be way less than if you used a regular airless sprayer. So, let's move up to another tip. It doesn't lock when you put it in. So. What I mean is, is I can put it in like this and I can pull it out. Some of them do lock. This here is a 313.
And just so you know, I am not a spray paint person. I mean, I never could. When I'd spray paint with a can, it'd always run and glob because I'd always want to be real close when I did it. I was not any good at it. So believe me, it's hard not to uh, sit up here like this and do this. The nice thing is I know I should have a six inch pattern. So I've got to stay away in order to keep that. So right there's where I'm at. Right at about 12, 13 inches, so that's good. Now I have a short extension tip. I didn't put it on here. Uh, and the reason is, is I don't really need it to practice for the water. My concern with using it though is gonna be the spits. And what I mean is, is when I push this, and let off it's done but with that tip there's still paint in there so it still goes and you get spits now they say when you're painting with it to release away from your your project so it spits off off away from it so otherwise you're gonna have to do this and never let go let's move up all right let's put the four in actually it's a 413 and these tips, I mean, I can spray anything that I'm gonna need. I can spray clear finishes, I can spray uh, enamels, oils, lacquers. I mean, the only thing I probably couldn't spray is something thick like some, what they call elastomeric coatings, which are gonna take a huge tip. But I'm not gonna really be using that. I don't have stucco, so this is gonna work perfect. This is a 413. measure that about nine inches so let's see let's get 12 inches away spray eight inches just like they said Actually, right there, I'm a little too close. And you can tell, like I say, I keep wanting to get close. You've got to learn to stay back. And when spraying water, you can see in this wind, there is overspray, and it looks like quite a bit. But from what I have researched on the internet, that's way less than if you used a regular air sprayer, or regular airless sprayer that wasn't a high efficiency. Let's move up to the five. Let's see how big a pattern we get. 515, if you remember, I got a 515 and a 517. Well, let's do the 517. Just hand tightening it. Okay. Hear that pump? It really kicks the product out. I'm gonna turn the pump up from two to four. And there's a little lock on the gun, so you can't spray. Puts a lot of product out. Let's see if I can tell how wide a pattern at 12 inches. Okay. 10 inches, just like it said. You can see there's a lot of product coming out of this. In fact, my water's running and I have to move faster. To keep, from to keep from having runs. You can see that pump runs continuously on this five. A lot of product. Let's move up to the highest one I have and that's the 619. I'm gonna turn the pump all the way up to five and see how it works. And then I'm gonna turn it down to two and see how it does just for giggles here. 
Hand tight, six. This is a 619. a 12 inch pattern let's see yep even on fire that pump is really working nice thing with this six though you got to remember you got to move fast so with that three, when I'm kind of like this, it's too slow. See all the runs? You're gonna have to. Which, I mean, it's gonna spray a lot of product. So you're gonna have to move fast. It's gonna get it covered. I'm gonna turn it down to two and see how the pump works. But on two, I can go a little slower, which only makes sense. Five, it's pumping faster, whereas two, it's not. So, that's too slow. And go just a little slower with it on two. And you see it all. You have to move pretty fast, so I like it. I'm a lot further than 12 inches, but I will say on your bigger uh, tips, you do get a little more overspray. But like I said, as I did my research, when you just use like the regular airless sprayers, like if you just got a Titan 410 or 440, the overspray is even I'd say 50% more than with these HEAs. So you see that, now double that. That's a lot of overspray, a lot of loss of product. That's the other reason I got the HEAs. With less overspray, less loss of product. Fun, easy to use. Pretty easy to use, even for somebody like me, who uh, is not a pay, uh, spray paint person. Some people can use spray paint and lay down a glass finish. That is not me. So I'm anxious to use this and see how well I do. Now, the next thing, see this hose, because it's so stiff, it wants to turn its own direction and you have to fight against it. All right, so now you got to do a pressure relief uh, if you're going to take this apart or stop for any length of time. You got to do a pressure relief. I'm basically going to turn this down to zero and press your gun and release the pressure. Now, what I want to do, and all that spraying, we probably used, oh, probably two gallons of water. What I want to do is see how much product is in this tube. Um, uh, when you go to clean, you're supposed to pick this up, put it in your clean bucket of water, um, basically turn it on, spray, uh, till you get your clean water coming through, which means all your product that was in the tube is gonna get wasted unless it's a paint that can be mixed with water. And then you just keep flushing, you take the cap off and you flush and you put this in water and you flush some more. Um, they tell you that you can take this out, press this to get the fluid in your tube out, but not to run this pump longer than a minute without it being submerged in something. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this bucket and put it back in there. Actually, I'm going to load this up, turn it on. Uh, 
shut it off. I'm not going to do the relief yet. I'm going to take this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, um, uh, a smaller bucket and spray this into it and measure how much is in this system so I can kind of get an idea how much I'm wasting. The other thing I'll do is when it's spraying until I get nothing, I'm going to kind of count one, 1,000, two, 1,000 and kind of get an idea of how quickly it runs through. Now, if I was cleaning, obviously I'd throw all that stuff in some water and soap and clean it up. And as you see, when I pick this up, the material that's in this tube drains out. So that's gonna be something else. When you go to take it out of your product, granted if it's paint, it's gonna be all the way up here, but you're gonna want that paint to come out. Otherwise, you're going to lose all that, too. Now, if you was doing a, a production job and a professional painter, you probably wouldn't care about the product loss because you'd have that figured in. But at the same time, if you're a person that's wanting to be kind to the environment, that's a lot of product to go into the environment. So here we are. It's just the tube in there. Let me go get a smaller bucket, and we'll spray this and see what we get. I'm going to spray it into this bucket here, and then I'll measure it into a smaller one to see how much. Now, remember, I haven't done a pressure relief yet. Um, and in all essence, you could do that, and that would get some of your product out of here while you're still submerged in your product. Um, but we did it this way. So if I push this real hard, it's going to spray real hard. So I want to release easy. Let's see, I'm just gonna go to two. Okay, that took about 44, 45 seconds to run all the way out, and that's just counting in my head. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, nothing fancy. Um, I was gonna measure how much it dumped, but uh, I mistakenly dumped the bucket over, so I don't know, but I mean, 44 seconds of runtime to clean the hose and the pump. I mean, it's a fair amount of product to be held in there. So I think it's really worth doing what we just did. And that is to put your pump in a dry bucket and hold your gun down and let it run for the 40 seconds or so to clean the tubing out uh, to regain all that product before you wash it out. So with that, uh, this is the new or new to me uh, Titan HEA high efficiency uh, 1900 airless sprayer. Uh, like I say they come in tall like this. They call it the Pro Series in a 1700 and 1900. They come in the smaller uh, profile in a 1500 and a 1700. Uh, I'll leave a link down below to the Titan website. You can look at the um, product descriptions and the specifications for each one. Uh, this one I got off of Amazon and I'll leave a link down there below, but I got it for about 450 bucks. Uh, like I said, I got this one um, through the Amazon uh, warehouse where items are returned, so I got it a little cheaper. Uh, but I think for a DIY uh, sprayer for the small amount of projects that you're probably gonna do and what I'm gonna do, I think this is a good, reasonable buy. Um, and gonna do a lot for me. I mean, I'm gonna use this for, like I say, the house, probably some, for some of the inside. Um, I've got some uh, cabinet projects and stuff that I have planned in the future. I'll use it for that. And you don't know what, uh, you spray your house and it looks really nice. Your neighbor may want you to do theirs and well, you can charge them and get the money back for the sprayer. So one other little tidbit is when you're on the Titan website, it'll show you about four maybe five spray tips that come with it but actually like I say the 515 comes with it and i got six others uh, and i found all of those on uh, amazon also and i'll try and find all of them and leave a link down below i hope you enjoyed this little review of the titan airless sprayer that i bought and uh, hopefully it's something you'll like um, got a project coming up where i'm going to spray uh, seal the brick and we'll get to see it in real action so till then we'll see you on the next video and thanks for watching